Hello there. UK government message to the people traffickers. We're providing you with more channel taxi services. Rishi Sunak might as well have sent the people traffickers a letter saying that we've laid on more boats to help them in their evil money-making scam of trading in people's lives. More power added to the magnet of the UK pull factor for irregular migration. Yes, the UK is hiring at least one private vessel for a reported 36 million quid for a year to help border force transport small boat occupants into the UK, says The Times. So let's get this straight. Rishi Sunak says his plan is working. The number of people coming across the channel in small boats is dropping. So we somehow now need more boats to deal with it. With Breitbart reporting that the government body responsible for controlling immigration and protecting the country's borders has signed a contract worth 36 million quid for the charter of vessels uh, to support small boats operations in the Dover Straits. And further, it goes on to say that the contract, which is set to come into force in April and will last until at least the end of March next year, will mean that private vessels will assist the border force in picking up migrants in the English Channel and bringing them ashore in Britain. So we can't find money, crews and vessels for the Royal Navy to protect us, but we can find vessels, etc. Beggar's belief, doesn't it? Anyway, don't forget that this small boat saga, as important as it is, is a very handy distraction from the now obscene numbers of those arriving through visa-stamping legal routes of migration. And those numbers will not be reducing any time soon, if ever. Anyway, the government story on these new private boats is that they are needed because the present border force cutter fleet is old and needs updating, because of all the constant repairs they need which keeps them out of action. Does that mean, when translated, that those cutters should have been replaced donkeys years ago, but they hadn't got a proper procurement and replacement plan in place? That's what it sounds like to me. And the message I get is that the government will start spending more and more on cutters to accommodate what will probably be more and more boats coming across. And once Keir Starmer's Labour Party gets into power with its super-fast, no-questions-asked, V8-powered asylum-seeker rubber stamp machine, we'll probably end up buying all the p and ferries to deal with the problem. And that's without the aforementioned legal migration. But one of the things that concerns me is that this ever-increasing inward migration will place even greater pressure on the taxpayer, to the point that those who do work will be nose to the grindstone for life to keep themselves afloat. Just look at the levels of tax right now. More and more workers with no time for their own family life, while others get everything based on their right to a family life. And if the population keeps increasing at the rate we've seen over the last decade and more, how long before we're told to further curb having our own children? Birth control to save the UK from overpopulation. You can see it coming a mile away. It's already happening by default in the UK because so many people are working full-time as couples but still cannot afford a proper home and to bring up children of their own. The dream of home ownership and a quiet, productive family life is already beyond their reach. And you have to ask yourself, is this incompetence or by design? And given how long this has now been going on for and how much effort is being expended on keeping the English Channel red carpet in place, you have to conclude that it is the latter, by design. Now, most people know this, but for those that don't, the UK birth rate has been below replacement levels 
since the early 1970s. For replacement in a developed nation like ours, we need a total fertility rate of at least 2.11. That's 2.11 babies on average for every female. Ours has been hovering at about the 1.8 level for five decades. Our natural population has therefore been slowly shrinking. If there were no immigration or emigration, our population would be falling, with the only thing keeping it afloat being how long we could keep the elderly alive. But the trend would still be downwards. But shrinking populations are bad for GDP growth. We need expanding populations to give governments the tax they want to spend on their legacies. But instead of encouraging people in the UK to have their own children, with tax breaks for example to bring up families to provide the next generation of doctors, nurses, veterinary surgeons and architects that the country needs, successive governments have decided instead that it was much better to force every adult in the UK into the workforce and keep them there. And just import people from abroad instead of the lengthy 18-plus year process of growing our own workforce. And when I say governments decided, I mean all governments, Labour, Tory and Coalition. Now, our total fertility rate in this country has recovered a little bit in the last couple of years, but it is still well below two. With the reason it is recovering a bit being down to the new entrant mothers. So when the lefties tell you we need to import ever more people because of our ageing population, call it out for the massive lie it really is. We have a birth rate problem amongst the natural UK population. We are not having a sufficient number of our own babies to replace our own population. A birth rate problem that no government has ever tried to address. So the replacement has to come from elsewhere. In fact, as far as I can see, every policy decision governments have made for decades on tax, work or whatever have been designed to further dampen the ability of UK-born citizens to start families. Even the adverts we have stuffed in our faces every day are designed to indicate that families are not for white people, for example. All this nudge unit stuff being deployed against the UK population. And this is happening across the developed world. The US, Canada, the EU, the UK, Japan, Australia, and get this, even South Korea. It has a TFR of below 1, 0.72, and that will be catastrophic for them. This birth rate collapse is so large that the global population levels are predicted to start falling within decades. With possibly the only way for some of the nastier regimes out there to continue to survive being the return of slavery. Think along the lines of China with its falling population TFR of about one and the plight of the Ouijas. They are subjected to mass abuse and are forced into labour camps to service the Chinese economy. But are we in the West being encouraged to have more children? No, anything but that. Our political masters are all well aware of this position. We actually have a government-induced birth rate problem. You have to ask yourself why a government that should be solely concerned with the safety and protection of a nation would so single-mindedly do all in its power over many decades to dismantle the country's very cohesiveness. Don't you get the feeling they are readying us to be delivered into the hands of a hostile force? and into a hostile environment of deep control where you will own nothing but be happy. Well, happy in the terms of eventually not knowing anything different. While those that do the controlling will own everything, including you and me, and they will be ecstatically happy about it.